would you would you say um, because that made me think of uh, the question of public art, contemporary public art, so pub public right. performance, right? Performing within the public sphere or with the public sphere, and this idea that we are opening spaces of um, common performance or of sharing. Uh, would you also consider that this is this horizontal? Um, yes, I, 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 well, it is, it's good. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that, you know, uh, when we didn't have such swift means, we would have to open a show or an exhibit, you know, in Warsaw, in Paris, in New York, wherever, and uh, relatively few people would see it. There would be a school, like the Frankfurt School would be in Frankfurt, moved to New York, a certain school of painters would be in Paris, the constructivists were in Moscow, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, or you had these, you know, the Bauhaus would have its uh, center and uh, then Black Mountain College and so on. Now the center is this, it's more like the cloud. I just, uh, you know, you and I, the three of us are having a really good conversation. Uh, will we have it again? I don't know. Will we meet in the flesh? I don't know. But it's a good conversation, so it's a different kind of association. This would not be possible without this technology. You know, we we, we couldn't do this by writing letters uh, back and forth. We could write the letters, of course, but it wouldn't have the kind of interactivity that we're having and the immediacy of your mind and my mind uh, in engaging. So I do think that this horizontality is very important. It's very good. Uh, but I also just want to urge people to defend their verticality as well. And do you think there's any any way of transposing that to artistic uh, initiatives? Because if well, you describe I... it this way, I mean, our conversation could be just as well my interaction with, with a uh, public piece of art or a public performance happening somewhere. Where I go, I am on the surface of it, there is something happening that is that is immediate, temporary, and somehow horizontal. Uh, well, the very fact that you're going to broadcast this makes it an installation. Mm -hmm. So we're having a conversation, but it's an installation. Now, broadcast it in some kind of uh, Warsaw Museum, take it and break it up into fragments, put it in relationship to several uh, 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 pieces of uh, horizontal sculpture, in which your face is on one and mine is on another, all of a sudden we have a kind of a performance theoretical installation and it'll probably be very, very popular. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, we'll try, we'll do our best. <laughs> uh, and do you think there's such such a thing as, uh, as a safe kind of performance or performativity as opposed to... What do you to, mean? What, what, um, what would you... Because I was... Uh, it's. It's slightly changing the topic, but it's also related to the question of an initiative where you propose a certain structure uh, and you invite others into this structure, which apparently here it's open, we're on a kind of a partner relation, but uh, at the same time, if we make a work out of it, we kind of create this, this, this superstructure, the metastructure. Right. So there's a, a, right. a hierarchy involved I don't know if I would call it symbolic violence, but it's somewhere in these in this vicinity, uh, and in that sense, it's a performative gesture that imposes a certain uh, way of working within the performance. Right now, you're talking about something that is new. So you're just talking about something avant-garde now, truly. Mm -hmm. So you're not talking about uh, a, 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 a performance in which it is concluded before it begins. That's a standard play, right? Mm -hmm. Before Volokovsky's tramway gets seen by an audience of the critics, it's already over. So they're just seeing the repetition uh, of, of the preparation. But you're talking about something that, because of the techniques we have, that can be interactive, that can be like my cloud, that can coalesce and disperse, and that can involve uh, improvisation, as well as thought, as well as artistic expression. That kind of combination is really, that is, that I would say constitutes something new if you could do it. Because art used to be very separate from thought. You had art and you had critics who 
squeezed the thought out of the art. In other words, it wasn't that uh, Shakespeare had an idea for uh, directly, but that some critic would say, the meaning of Hamlet is, the meaning of Othello is, etc. But what you're proposing is a kind of artist, uh, scholar, critic, theorist, all in one because of the relational aesthetics, as you call them. I think that really is a new idea. And I think that is really uh, intriguing. And I think that can only be done with these kind of conversations uh, combined with installations and actions. So that is, that is uh, you know, that, that's, that's, if there is an avant-garde of today, that's where it is. But this happens a lot in so-called lecture performances. It also happened already in the 70s, right? Robert Morris, um, for instance. Yeah, yeah, but those were prepared. I, what we're doing now is not. I, it's, it's a little bit different because those were lecture performances. Those were lectures turned into performances. But what we're, I'm talking about something much more active, uh, somewhere between uh, dramas and performances, where uh, more like sports, intellectual sports. Yeah, but it's uh, still kind of performing theory, I would say, you know, that you have... Yes, performing theory. That we are at theory. the same time artists, critics... Uh, yes, I yes, dancers, I like that. ...audience, right. you know, we are like... Right. Oh, in this uh, I, I agree. That's, that's, that's something new and different. I think that is also the result of the expansion of the university world. In other words, one of the outcomes of 1968 was that when the uh, intellectuals and the artists were defeated in the streets of Paris, uh, they, in a, it seemed like they retreated to uh, the Sorbonne, you know. You know, I have uh, uh, a contradiction here. I think that my head is very pessimistic when I think about things, when I think about uh, the degradation of the environment, when I think about the expansion of the population, when I think about the centralization of power, when I think about the corporatization of the universities, when I think about any of these things, when I think about uh, you know the coming profound rivalry between China and the United States, uh, uh, what, what, when I think about any of these things, I, I'm not so happy. But I have a, you can't see it, I'm not so fat, but I have a very nice stomach, and I eat well. And so there's a big optimism. Um, I'll show you. My optimism is down here. I have a big optimism down here. Uh, and the optimism is in, in practice. In other words, I'm not an unhappy person. I do like to live my life. I have my friends. So I can't be a, a tragedian up here and, a, and an optimist down here without recognizing the contradictions. And if I had to choose, if I had to finally choose between what I think and what I feel, I'd have to go for what I feel. So that even though everything indicates the world is becoming a pile of shit, the fact is it probably isn't. Uh, <laughs> People are. Uh, this is American cloud, also, isn't it? Uh, yes, maybe it's an American cloud. I know that you poles are always depressed. So uh, t tell me the truth. I don't know about us poles. I'm I think more... I'm kind of on your side in that sense. I and what about you? Well, I try to defend myself against dark clouds. Yes, also. <laughs> See, I don't defend myself against dark clouds. I kind of lay on the ground. Uh, hold my stomach, which feels good, and watch the dark clouds. I enjoy them in a certain profound way. And that's why another thing about this Kantian sublime, you know, there's, there, is, uh, uh, there is pleasure in catastrophe. Uh, it, it's a sad thing to say, maybe, about human beings, but it's also true. Uh, we can deny uh, cogito ergo sum, but uh, it's still there to some degree because it's only through the mind that we really can relive the past and uh, predict the future. So we, we use that, uh, you know, and I don't know where to place dreams, uh, whether to place them in the belly or in the mind, uh, you know, actual physical dreams. Uh, mm. Well, that's one nice dream we've been having. Okay, I hope uh, I've uh, uh, done what I was required to do. Yes, let me see, let me see the checklist. Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> to do list. <laughs>